Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. The OG gotta respect the success that, you know, the new generation is getting from the internet. The part that the new generation gotta respect from the OGs is the journey. I think, I think the youth shouldn't compete with the OGs because they not running the same race. Like, I feel like it's a lot of comedians in my generation, they talking like they've been outside performing for a long time, and these niggas haven't. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been performing for 11 years. I'm 29. I started at 18. Wow. That's the only big. person I was performing when I started was Matt Rife. Mm. I know Matt. I'm talking about my generation. Right, right, right. It's wow. a Leonard Oops. It, you know, Nav Green. It's people that I know. It's true comics because we was damn near one of the only few comedians that was out at the time. You know, and then my generation, we start popping off social media. So I just started meeting my peers. I've been knowing my guests for nine years now. I've been knowing Mark Curry for seven years now. I've been knowing all the OGs, D-Ray, for seven, eight years now. Right. But they might think I just met these people because I um, got a name on social media now. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Wow. That's y'all story. I'm coming to mine. see you tonight. You gotta wear it. <laughs> yeah, you just convinced me, nigga. Yeah. No, no, no. If you put me truth. on the list, nigga, I will be Pull there. Up, I you got you. Yeah. Oh, we gonna go because I okay. need to see if this nigga really about what he talking I about. Is he real funny? <laughs> is he real, real? I love it. But, no, okay, no, but I had another question before you get into anything else. Okay, so you said when you saw Marlon. Wayne's on stage. You're like, mm -hmm. man, I can do this. Yep. A lot of times we see people and be like, man, I can do what they do. Yep. Till the first time you had to go on stage. <laughs> I had to. I would damn near if I had if if I seen Marlon as soon as I got on stage the, for the first time, I'd apologize to Marlon Wayne's. I'd have been like, oh no, I got a long way to go. I got a long way to go. OG, I respect everything you're doing. But at that time when I left that show and I was sitting in the crowd, man, I could do that shit. Mm hmm. I think that's God, mm -hmm. man. He just opened his that. eyes to He it. humbled you. That's yeah, what the thing is. Him see no, Marlon Wayne humbled me. No, comedy no, I'm humbled I'm talking me. comedy, yeah. Yeah, them open mics humbled me. So how how was the reception from the crowd that first time when you went? What happened? It was good. People seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. Because I, I felt like I did horrible because I wrote some jokes and everything. And when I hit that stage, I forgot every fucking thing I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous, nervous. everything. But... You know, I just started talking shit about the crowd, but I had to realize how to learn. Like, I was making the crowd go against me because mm. it's not a lot of people. You only got like 20 people in here. So if I'm roasting 10 people and I'm calling them tacky and ugly and all this shit, I'm roasting how I would roast on the street. Mm -hmm. So I'm making the crowd go against me. Got you it. know what I'm saying? But people, it was like, it was cool. It was shaky. But people was laughing, not laughing. But then people came was like, that was your first time. You did so good, and you know you uh you got that Jamie Fox in you. You got you remind me of Mike Gibson. That helped me to be like really, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't a good student, none of that. I didn't get compliments after motherfucking class. Right, <laughs> pat on the you did a great job. So people was giving me a pat on the back. So I'm, like, I'm finna keep doing this shit. I'm finna get good. When was yeah. the first show that you felt like man that when, when you <laughs> felt like you killed it? Mm, I feel like um. I feel I had a show in I had a show in Oakland one time and um it was it was like early my first year and I was telling a joke um and I was talking about how how niggas in Oakland be you feel me how we talk walk all that and um I was I was using my uh character voice Sonny Bo so I was like bro my mama bro you feel me nigga ooh, I'm imitating you know how we act it was a nigga in the front with dreads. This nigga's crying laughing. He's crying. And it's not a lot of people in there, so I felt it, you know? And it made me, like, realize, like, oh, I'm getting good at this shit. And that really would birth my character, Sonny Bo. Yeah, I want to talk about Sonny Bo. Like, yeah. like when, did, when you birthed that character, what was the first thing that you felt like, I'm going to do this with that character? Psych. I ain't no comedian, you feel me? I knew I was gonna do what I did on stage with that character. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, when I got the, when I got my dread wig, um, I, I was like, I got my dread wig, and instant I was just like, you feel me? Uh, how bare are you niggas? How at women? You know what I'm saying? And she, I'm, what's happening, bitch? You feel me? Yeah. Turn around, see what you turning down. I'm doing hell a little shit, acting like a town nigga, all the shit. Then um, it went viral. Wow. That shit went like Bay Area viral. Yeah, that's hard, though. Yeah, Bay Area viral. I wasn't like worldwide yeah, viral. Yeah, yeah, but it went viral. It hit yeah. hard enough for you to know. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and then I did that video, and then shit. Uh, 
I was doing comedy for like two years. I did that video. And that shit, Bay Area viral. And then shit, I started selling hella tickets. Wow, man. Like, you you know, you smart, dude. Like, I knew that when I looked at your Thank page. You. you know, just looking at the, I be trying to educate people on there, mm -hmm. like YouTube and all that stuff. When I seen the, 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 what it was, the kickback podcast, the Cali, it was the Cali kickback. Yeah, the Cali kickback. When I seen that, I was like, this is what I be telling people. Like, you got to be creative within your brand. Mm -hmm. you, you got, you just put something with podcasts on there because you know you need that. Mm -hmm. All of them need that, really, to be, to me, like the ones, they need to have extra tiers. You know, you see all these different people getting people into their YouTube and all that far as they, they, they do it, the old musicians, they do the, they do the YouTubes. But then at the end of the day, they just do one one category. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. That's a whole that's a whole network. That's a whole branding. You could do it all kind of ways. Yeah, and keep people on that page. Yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? You gotta want to do that. You, but you still got. That, but that's a that's something that's gonna carry you on. Mm. Think about it. That that's why you that's where you start to build. That's why I like Country Wayne and what mm. he does because yeah. of the way he built it up. Exactly. Who, you know, you can you, when you start making the kind of money that he tells me he makes on that stuff. Yeah. It's out of this world. You see I, what I I'm feel saying? Like, I feel like Country Wayne is like an alien. No, nah, I told him. Yeah, right. yeah, I think so too. Though <laughs> I, I, think so too. I think a lot you of people are trying to right. do what Country Wayne you doing, right. and I think you just can't. Did I think you hear a lot what of people I said? Just can't do that. An alien. Yeah, that's what I told him. Nigga, you an alien? Yeah. Causing the tension. Hey, mama. Yo. <laughs> I'm doing good. What's up with all of this? Yeah. Yeah. What is motivation like for a lot of yeah. people to get up off their butt and try? Yeah. yeah. Even if they don't accomplish it to the level that like he, he does. has, yeah. but it made them get up and, okay, if he can do that, he just doing it with a phone, I can do it because, you know, back in the day, people feel like, oh, I need this production team, I need this, I need that, and it, people look at it like it's so unreachable. But for the main fact that you can see how he started, and he just started with social media, he he. I think that's off, normal like, nowadays. I think... I I think the special thing about Country Wayne is that he he keeps growing, he keep elevating. Mm -hmm. A lot of people at this point, everybody can pull out their phone and do a motherfucking skit. That ain't impressive. But can you take it to the next can level? Can you keep going? Can you elevate the production? Can you get on stage? Can you? Are you going to continue to get on stage? Country Wayne been performing. He's being consistent. Yeah. So if he but he started consistent. performing after he was doing the skits for a while. He exactly. didn't just and that's the few that why the OGs be right. on <laughs> all the, all the but generation. But you got to think right. about this though. We just said something earlier. You really said, well, I said that Will Smith mm -hmm. killed and y'all like, he had production. Nothing's real. Yeah. But I could say the same thing about Country Wayne with just that cell phone and, and he killing it on exactly. the same type level. Exactly. So there's a big window for people to come up in. Yeah. You ain't got no excuse. Yeah. You can start here with just the phone yeah. or if you're in the big league yeah. and you can come with production, there's so many different ways you can deal with the digital world right yeah. now. Yeah. Am I right? I feel like my generation get that though. They yeah. understand that. Mm -hmm. They I do. Think the part they don't they understand do. is what the OGs is trying to tell niggas. Y'all gotta right. perform. Y'all got to perform more. Niggas performing for money, that don't count, nigga. Yeah. That don't count. Nigga, you got to practice. You got to care. You got to get better. Niggas is just getting through the night. I'm not saying Country Wayne is, but I'm saying people in this time, I think my generation, understand social media. These niggas don't understand live performance. And it's a big difference. It's How a it's fucking big difference. They ain't got shit to do when you hit that stage in real life. I nigga, know, it ain't no edits. It ain't no cuts. It ain't no, it ain't none of that shit. Alex Thomas, Alex Thomas talked about that same thing. He, yeah. he broke it down on my show. When it first started, I just had a problem with dudes calling themselves comedians. Okay. You, you're funny. Anybody can be funny for 30 seconds, maybe a minute. A comedian is, there's 2,000 people. Here's the mic. You're next. I, now, now let me see how funny you are. Because that's an art form right there. You get up there and entertain those people for 20 minutes. A room full of thousand strangers, and you, and you kill them. Oh, more power you to you, but you're guy. a comedian. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Good job, right? But a lot of these cats, the social media guys, it's almost like I hate to say it, insta, instant, insta. It's like insta famous. People are getting famous without having to be talented. Wow. People, uh, you know, they, they're getting it twisted just because you have 11 million followers. I've had dudes that have 11 million followers but don't have 11 minutes of jokes on stage. No, I get you, you, it, I get, get it. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. I've seen it happen right in my fucking face. Yeah. Again, not knocking them. 
in any kind of way. I know a lot of the young, you know, social media dudes that are that that were able to flip it. You know, like take DC Young Fly, yeah, Country Country, Country Wayne, uh, Lewis Belt. A lot yeah. of you know, a lot of these dudes were able to flip it and make. Man, I'm proud of those. No, dudes. Like the way he felt about it, and I felt him on it. I had it's so many different ways. I love what uh, I love what Carlos Miller told me about it. Yeah. I love what Bubba Dub told me yeah. about it. I love every one of y'all have given me some great examples. And I just want to be in the midst of making this conversation happen so people can continue to understand and learn yeah. on both sides of it. Yeah. That's what Boss Talk people, 101 see, is. People see my journey. People see my journey and think I know Carlos Miller from social media. I know Carlos Miller from being a comic. He came to the Bay Area. We was on the show together. He didn't know me. I knew him. That's hard. Yeah, but we had a mutual connect, Bob Sumner. Wow. Bob Sumner is the person that discovered that, yeah. everybody on Def name. Comedy Jam. Yeah. That's what the game is missing. Wow. But that's what Carlos Miller is doing. 85 South got a hub of talent. Mm -hmm. I seen that. Yeah. How did you end up connecting with him and going? Because you, I seen you on, on the 85 South like platform doing your thing. Yeah. How did you end up doing that? Did you and him decide that's what you were going to do? Yeah, maintaining a relationship. Every time Carlos Miller came to Cali, I'm going to look out. Every time I came to Atlanta, he looked out for okay, me. Okay, okay. You know, I was on one of the... The beginning episodes of the yeah. 85 South show with the bricks on the back. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? They just wasn't tripping off what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? But I was buying anything Carlos and 85 South doing. That's all. So it, the bigger it got, shit, I'm just. I'm coming on the same platform. Y'all just noticing it because the platform got bigger. That's hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.